In this video, I'm going to show you how to soft mod any version of the original Xbox. The original Xbox is now over 21 years old, and to celebrate the storied life of this system, I'm going to show you how to soft mod one if you happen to have one laying around that is still in stock state. This will allow you to take advantage of the amazing Xbox Homebrew community, as well as dumping your BIOS files for emulation use. On top of any other numerous project you might want to do with it. But for this guide, we're focusing on the soft mod specifically, so we're not going to be covering how to swap out a bigger hard drive or anything in this video, just doing the mod process itself. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now as we get started, there are a few things you're going to need to do this process, the first of which being a way to connect a USB drive up to your Xbox, so you can get an Xbox USB adapter from Make Megahertz, you can make one yourself out of an Xbox extension cable and a USB cable, but there's a number of options out there, this is just one of the easier ones to point to. Next, you're going to need a USB flash drive that is under 4GB. Anything above 4GB is not going to be compatible with the original Xbox. So I have personally used this type of USB flash drive and it works great. Unfortunately, they can only be bought in bulk these days. The Console Mods Wiki also has a wonderful USB compatibility list for original Xbox, so you can check, so you can check this list for any drives you might already have in your possession. Next, you're going to need an exploitable game, so that can include Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell, any revision of the game should work. Mech Assault, so this one will work with the original release of the game, not a Greatest Hits version. 007 Agent Under Fire, this one is most reliable with a black label version of the game, but there are some Platinum Hits versions of the disc that do work, as long as they have the ID number of 1448517 on the disc itself. Other games that are exploitable include Metal Arms Glitch in the System and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. But for the easiest time to perform this mod, you will want to use either Splinter Cell or Mech Assault, followed by Agent Under Fire, then Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4, and then Metal Arms in terms of difficulty. And the last thing you're going to need is a Windows PC, as the tools we are using are Windows based. So the first of which being Fat X Explorer. So link to this will be in the description below, but you're going to go to the downloads page, check out the beta, Scroll down to the download here and download the version for your computer. And the next thing we're going to do is head over to Rocky Five's GitHub page and download the Xbox soft modding tool. So, link to this will be in the description below, but you click on download, it'll bring you here, and you can download the Xbox soft modding tool.zip. And then if you head over here to the extras disk, you can download this as well. So from here, just go ahead and get FatX Explorer and the Xbox Soft Modding Toolkit extracted. There we go. And now insert your USB drive that you're going to use for this modding process into your computer. Alright, there we go. I'm just going to close out of that real quick. But now open your FatX Explorer folder. Open the subfolder. And then go ahead and launch FatX Explorer. If you don't have .NET 6 installed, chances are it'll throw up an error asking you to install it, so just go ahead and do so if it happens. But now within FatX Explorer, we're going to format our USB drive to work with our Xbox. So click on the Formatting Tools button up here. Might need to double click. Select Original Xbox Memory Unit. It should find your USB drive. Again, only drives that are 4 gigabytes and smaller will work on Original Xbox. So go ahead and select your drive from the list. Click on Next. Format as a data partition, next. Now you can set a name, so I'm just gonna name mine Xbox. Next. I don't have anything that I'm gonna preload onto this one, so just click on next, and then click on format. And there we go, our drive is now formatted to work with the original Xbox. So from here, double click on devices, select your original Xbox memory unit, load device, and now you will see a mount data partition on X or whatever letter it decides to give you. So just go ahead and click on this. And it will allow you to drop files directly into this USB drive like you normally would, except that it's working for Xbox. So I'm just going to minimize FatX Explorer real quick. Bring this over there. All right. Now inside the Xbox soft modding folder, we are looking for the soft mod package folder. 
And inside you will see the various soft mod packages for all the different games that are exploitable. So you are going to extract the one that you want to use for your specific game. So I'm going to be using Mech Assault in my example today. So I'm just going to grab the Mech Assault folder and tell it to extract. I'm going to open it up. Open up the UData folder. And I'm going to drag this numbered folder directly into my USB drive. So if you're going to be using 007, same thing, just extract the folder, open up the UData folder, and drag it in. And then Splinter Cell, same deal. UData folder, drag the numbered folder right into your USB drive. After copying over your game save for your exploitable game, there's one more thing we need to do, and that is copy over the soft mod save. So just get this one extracted as well. Open it up, open up the UData folder, and drag it right on in. And there we go. But with those saves on our USB drive, just head back into FatX Explorer, go back into Devices, choose your Xbox memory unit, and tell it to unmount. And with that, we're done with FatX Explorer, and we can close out of it. And we're ready to put our USB drive into our Xbox. Now over on your Xbox, make sure you get that USB drive hooked up to it, and head into the Memory tab. And you should see your USB drive here, so go ahead and select it. And now you're going to copy over your SoftMod exploit save to your Xbox's internal hard drive. So regardless of which one you've chosen, just go ahead and just copy them to your Xbox's hard drive. And then also be sure to copy over the Xbox soft modding tool. And once you have all those copied over, you can just remove the USB drive from your Xbox. And then insert your soft mod game of choice. And then give the console a quick reboot for added, uh, I don't know, it's just recommended to do it, so just do it. Now for Mech Assault to trigger the exploit, you just click on Campaign, and then select the Run Linux Profile. Triggering the exploit with Splinter Cell is similar, you just go to Start Game, select the Linux Profile, and press A on Checkpoints. Using Agent Under Fire is a bit more involved, but still not too complicated. You go in to select Mission, Choose Trouble in Paradise. Once you see the helicopter, quit out of the mission. Press B. Go to Load Mission, choose Xbox Hard Disk. Now regardless of your entry method, you should be brought to the Xbox Soft Modding Tool home screen here. Thank you for choosing the Xbox Soft Modding Tool. If you have any feedback or bugs, let them know via the Homebrew <laughs> Discord. But press A to continue. After the initial setup phase there, you're going to get an important info notice about your Xbox's EEPROM being backed up to E Backups EEPROM. So after we finish doing our soft mod, we're going to want to FTP into our Xbox and back this up. That way we have a way to recover our Xbox in case the hard drive breaks or anything like that. And there you go. That's why it's important. And just like that, your Xbox is now soft modded. So once you press A to shut down the box, you need to remove your exploit disk. So just go ahead and do so while the boot animation is playing. And after the Xbox has finished rebooting, it's going to be doing more soft modding instructions for the uh, soft mod process. So just wait for it to do its thing. 
And with that, your Xbox is now soft modded and you can enjoy all the benefits that a soft mod brings to the table. But before we continue any further, let's go ahead and back up that EEPROM backup that was made during the soft modding process. So get your Xbox hooked up to your network and you should see a network info section on the right side of the screen get populated with an IP address. Yeah. So over on your computer, go ahead and open up an FTP program like FileZilla, that's the one I use. And we're going to type in the IP address of our Xbox that is listed in that network info section. And then type a username and password. It's typically Xbox. And then port is going to be 21. And then just press enter. And then just press OK. And there we go, there is my Xbox's internal drive. So I'm gonna access the E drive, the backups folder, and I'm gonna copy the EEPROM folder to my desktop. And there we go, now I have a backup of my X's EEPROM, so that way I can make new hard drives directly from my computer and be able to lock them to my Xbox. But that's for a different video. But make sure you store your EEPROM backup in a number of different places so that way it doesn't get lost because you will need it. But now I just want to go over some extra stuff here using the Xbox soft modding tools. Extras disc. So if you burn this to a DVD, you can put it in your Xbox, it'll show up down there at the bottom. But you could use this disc to install different dashboards, reinstall the Microsoft dashboard so you can use Insignia, and install a couple of various applications. So I'm just going to go ahead and launch into the disc. And now on the main menu of the soft mod disc here, You'll see options to install applications. So we've got things like Dash Loader, Customizer, DVD to Xbox, DVD-X. And then under Dashboards, we have a bunch of various ones. Avalanche, Evolution X, User Interface X, Unleash X, XBMC. And then, of course, the MS Dashboards down there at the bottom. So I like to use the XBMC for Gamers Dashboard these days. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this one installed. So there's a couple of various options to do here. I'm just going to choose E-Dashboard. And at the end of that install process, it's saying, do you want to remove the dashboard located at C-Dashboard? If it exists, this is required to boot E-Dashboard. So I'm going to say yes. That way it'll boot into XBMC for gamers. And there we go. And now I want to get the MS Dashboard reinstalled, so that way I can use Insignia. So, MS Dashboards, stock MS Dash 5960, install, install size, yes. Okay, clean up the C drive. And then, yes, I want to install the audio, it just is weird without it to me. So, there we go. And there we go, now I have the Microsoft dashboard so I can use Insignia. But if you want to take the time to install some other applications, you could do so now, like DVD to Xbox. It's not going to be the most useful of stuff right now on the smaller stock hard drive, but you could get some things installed now, so that way when you clone your hard drive later, you don't have to do as much later, so it works out. Now the last option I'm going to cover in this video is under the Advanced menu. If, for whatever reason, you ever want to return your Xbox to its stock state, you can go down here to Restore Xbox to Default Factory State and run it, and it will unmod your system. But now that I've finished doing all the things I want to do with this tool disk, I could just go ahead and eject it. And I'm now brought into the XBMC for Gamers dashboard. I can now add in my own gamer profile here, so just name it whatever you want. There we go. And then you could delete other profiles like the DVD to Xbox One. But then just load profile. And there we go, there's my new XBMC for Gamers dashboard. But you might want to change some settings here real quick, especially if you want to have Insignia work. So if you press your black button, go down to Settings, Network. We're going to change the assignment from DHCP to Default Dashboard, so that way it'll work with Insignia here. And after you get that set, you can just go ahead and back out. 
but you're able to adjust things like the appearance, your region, so things like that, time zones for um, for the automatic clock setting. Change the resolution, flicker filters, softening effects. Skin settings, so if you want to have um, dark mode, I believe that's in here somewhere. Enable auto login for your default profile. Then there's different scripts in here that you can run as well, so this can be very helpful for a number of different things. Not going to go over them in much detail right now. Startup options, here we go. Night mode, so if you want to have a darker theme, there you go. You can change your theme. You can install more themes. Again, not something I'm going to go over too much in this video, but there you go. But if you press the back button on your controller, you can change between the various option menus here. So it defaults to games, and if you have games installed, they'll show up here. But you can do homebrew, applications. So applications where you're going to find things like DVD to Xbox, NK patcher settings, and then uh, the Xbox dashboard as well. But I'm going to go ahead and load up the original Xbox dashboard and check for my Insignia compatibility real quick. And it is booted right back up into my Xbox Live dashboard, so that means Insignia is still working as intended. Very good. But from here, you can go ahead and enter your memory tab, go to your Xbox hard drive, and you can delete your soft mod exploit saves if desired. You don't have to, but if you actually plan on playing those games, you might as well. But do make sure not to delete any of the other ones that were added in after the fact. So while the exploited saves are fine to delete, you want to make sure that you don't delete things like Rescue Dash. Any unknown titles, Unleash X, or the Xbox soft modding tool. Like don't delete this stuff, it can save your bacon later down the road. And then to leave the Xbox Dash, you can just reboot your Xbox or hold down RL start and back. And with that, you have a basic soft modded Xbox system with your own custom dashboard and access to Insignia still intact. So from here, you can begin messing with homebrew and different things like that. But if you want to install games and actually fully take advantage of the Xbox, it is necessary to upgrade the hard drive. That's going to be covered in a different video from this one. This is just getting your system soft modded. So check out the channel for additional Xbox videos. That way you can really take advantage of this amazing system. But thank you so much as always for watching this tutorial. I hope it helps you get your Xbox soft modded and able to run the things that you want it to run. But here at the end of the video, I do have a couple of big favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like or dislike button, depending on how much you like this tutorial, as well as that sub and notification bell so you can see when new content goes live on the channel. I have loads coming your way and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing this content to you. Big shout out to all of our current backers. Thank you so much for believing what we do here and helping us keep it going. Your champions, never forget it. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.